Ah. Do you have the microphone? Yeah, I'll just hold it. Well, obviously this is a bit unusual. The two of us are used to doing almost this very same thing in the auditorium of some library here in the region and seeing familiar faces year after year. Uh, we can't see your faces, but we trust that most of you can see ours and more important, hear us playing this music. Um, I'm already out of breath, so this is a good time for me to tell a story. Um, we were assembling this program and looking for material to do, and I was disappointed in several of the possibilities we con had considered. And then Annette reminded me of a tune that I hadn't thought of in many years. She found it in her list of things that we've tried or experimented with. And um, it's a tune of my own creation. I'm reluctant to use the term composition, and you'll understand why as th this goes. In the early years of this revival of klezmer music that has been going on now for almost a lifetime, it seems, it still seemed like something kind of new to a lot of us, something that we were spending more time exploring than actually practicing. And um, I was very often hired to teach at various workshops and um, folk festival programs and things like this. Some of these events that would last for several days or for a week at a time. And at all of these events, on almost every evening there was live dancing, seldom with a, a pre-planned arrangement, just a group of musicians would agree to get together and start the program for that evening's dance. And very often others would come and join in and some who had already been playing might drop out and take turns playing. It was not uncommon during that time that I would be playing the lead voice on one of these dance events. And after, after a half an hour of dancing nonstop, my memory would fail me and I would not be able to think of a tune to play next. So I would make something up. And this happened, must have happened more than a few times because I now vaguely remember going through this process of inventing a new tune first just as filler while I thought of something else, but then eventually where it became something that I repeated and then added additional sections. And at one point I made it my challenge, even though I didn't plan on doing this, that when it would happen, I would try to actually create something that was coherent as a melody, and where after inventing the second or third part, I would still remember what I did the first time and go back and do it again. Now I have to introduce a friend of mine who we all call Doc. His name is Paul Frybush. Uh, he lives in Greensboro, North Carolina, and a sweet fellow and an avid both fan and practitioner of klezmer music. And he, was, he attended as a student at one of these festivals one year, and he quickly showed how ambitious he was at learning tunes, exploring tunes, discovering things in some cases he would discover things in my own record collection that I hadn't paid attention to. And then he would play a tune I liked, and I'd say, where do you get that? And he said, I got that from your record. And so it goes. He was called Doc for reasons I don't know, but he carried his clarinet around in a case like this. And I thought that was so charming when I got the chance, I got one of these clarinet cases. So, but nobody calls me Doc. So. It happened on one of these occasions where I was playing for one of these long dance events. And Doc came up to me afterward and he said, you played a tune there that I didn't know. And uh, he says, but I think I know all the tunes you know. And I said, yeah. And he said, so what was that one you put in the middle there? And I said, the one that goes like this. And I did a little bit. And he said, yeah. And I said, yeah, I just made that up. And he said, oh, I thought so. And he says, and, and can you play it again now? And I said, no, I only remember the first part. A year or so later, we were playing at another one of these events. And he played a tune that I didn't know. And I asked him about it later. And he said, you don't know that tune? And I said, no. And he says, hmm, that's a tune you played last year. And I recorded it. And I learned it. And now I'm playing it. <laughs> so a couple of years later, I was playing at his wedding. I can't remember a lot of details, but I know Michael Alpert was there playing fiddle, Deborah Strauss was there playing fiddle, 
And the same thing happened, and I couldn't think of a tune to play next, and I invented something. And even then, the thought went through my mind, Doc is out there dancing with his new bride, and he's not recording this. Uh, so I made a point of remembering it, and later, when I was in my room, I wrote it down, made little notes, or I, or I went through it enough to remind myself of what it was, and I actually remembered my own three-part tune, which we all now call Doc's Wedding. And it comes at the end of this little medley. I won't have to make it up because I already did. But it's not the first tune, it's not the second tune, it's the fourth tune that occurs in this little sequence that we're about to begin now. It begins with something that's not a dance tune. This is a... Uh, in the source from which I learned it, it's called a volach, which is the way people from northern Yiddish-speaking countries refer to tunes that come from somewhere in the south, something Valachian, and therefore called a volach. So the same tune that a uh, Ukrainian or Basaravian Jew would just call by some name, like the particular form that it is, in this case, a Dobrijen, Northern Jews will just refer to it as something from down south there, something from in or near Valachia, and they call it a volach. So here we go with a series of tunes ending with the tune that I lovingly dedicate to my friend Paul Doc Freibusch.
This is about the point in the program where I would ask if anybody has any questions or any comments. And it used to be, what is klezmer music? But we stopped hearing that question some years ago. Then next, most often, it was somebody pointing at the harp and asking Annette what she's doing with her hands over here on this side of the instrument. And the next time we see you all in person, we'll be ready to answer those questions again. Um, there is a session after this. After the performance is over, Fran and the people with YIVO have graciously agreed to keep the Zoom session running, so then you can unmute yourselves and ask some questions, not all at once, we hope, and have a little bit of banter. And um, there won't be any uh, snacks served, unfortunately, but you might want to provide for that on your own. Okay. There was a question about the harp. Question. Oh, there is a question. You mean we're getting texts of questions? Mm -hmm. You can address it now or later. It's up to you. Since I just saw this question about this particular harp, um, I just try to answer this briefly because this might be a question which interests not just one person but several. Um, this the style of harp is a lever harp or folk harp. So um, in order to t make half tone steps, I have to switch. I turn a lever and the lever makes the string half a step higher. Um, so I have the full chromatic um, range of notes, but I need to use my hands to switch the levers. This particular harp is made of carbon fiber, which makes it much lighter than regular wood harps. Um, it makes it also basically indestructible. It stays much longer in tune. So it has all these nice advantages and I think it sounds fabulous. Um, I can play unamplified, but of course today through Zoom, I play with a microphone, which is pointed to one of the sound holes there. Um, we can answer more questions later. We think we'll just continue playing now.
I don't think we thought about it in advance that there's a little bit of a wedding theme. Of course, there's inherently a wedding theme given that we're playing klezmer music, which is essentially wedding music. Over the years, those of us exploring and um, promoting this music kept trying in various ways to somehow stretch that, to somehow express this as a more universal music. But in the end, the facts simply boiled down to the fact this is old traditional Jewish wedding music. And the cases where it was used for anything else were always somewhat exceptional. But of course, now we live in an era where we can play any kind of music anytime and the music can stand on its own merits. And um, nonetheless, we talked about my friend Doc and his wedding and the tune that I invented out of desperation at his wedding. And um, the next is a tune that is not associated at all with weddings. It's not wedding music. It's Hasidic music. It's a rather important, I don't, I don't have the right uh, adjectives or nouns to describe what it is. It's a rather deep and important tune, at least in some ways of thinking. But a good friend of ours and a former harp student of Annette's got married a couple of years ago and specifically named this as the tune she wanted as a processional at her chasne. And so I t dug out all of my resources, including several books with this tune notated in various ways, and started doing my homework and embraced this Hasidic melody. Um, it's an absolutely fabulous tune. It's the type of tune referred to in, um, in writings by Israel Rabinovich, who wrote a charming story, which I would love to just read for you, but there isn't time for all of that. But he mentions an old klezmer who's come from the old world to the new and quickly finds his status and his role in the community eroding and disappearing under the onslaught of jazz and other popular music-oriented uh, idioms and thinking wistfully back on his, t his life in his home country where his music was cherished and vital. And he refers, among other things, to the Dobrijens and the Volachals and the various other spiritually elevated tunes without which a wedding couldn't happen in the old country. And this may not have been one of the tunes played at a wedding, but this is that kind of tune. I could go on and make a lecture out of this, but I'll leave it at that for now.
Okay, we're drawing near the end of our program. Um, these are strange times we're living in, and we can locally thank the Chicago YIVO organization for helping us to expand the possibilities within these restricted possibilities. And I don't know about any of the other programs in this series, but intentionally or not, they expanded it far beyond our Chicago area. So we're not able to see all of you who come annually to these concerts that we do with YIVO. But on the other hand, friends and colleagues of us from far away, on other continents even, I believe are attending and listening to this now. And so let's embrace the, ex the added possibilities that come along with our restricted possibilities these days. Special thanks to Fran Dvorkin, Jake Morovitz, and our other friends at YIVO for organizing this. Fran, you're there, thank you much. Special thanks to our friend Michael Winograd who is sitting at home in Brooklyn right now and who came in here with us several days ago from Brooklyn to listen to our, our microphones and other setup and coach us on how to get the best we could out of the resources we have. Thanks to Ilana Kravitz, who had us do a similar presentation about six months ago at the end of July, and who generously provided us with a very nice sound interface that enables us to connect our audio gear to the internet and we're using that same device again today. Thanks to my buddy Doc for getting married and inspiring a nice tune. 
And thanks to my friend Jeffrey Wallach, who's done tireless research into klezmer music that's enriched the lives of countless people, including people who didn't know what he contributed to the performances and recordings that they were able to hear. And I'm sure I'm leaving out some wonderful people who have done wonderful things, but here we are, happy to be doing this. It's a treat. And we have two more things we could play. We have to choose which one is going to be the one we do. I'm looking at the titles and they're meaningless to me. I'm drawing a blank because I'm in another world right now. I hope that's a good thing. <laughs> this is a thing we simply refer to as the Bugic melody because two of the three components are from a recording made a privately, not a commercial recording, a privately made recording by one of the many wonderful musical members of the Bugic Klezmer family of Yash. Romania. I won't try to say more than that about it. I'll be out of breath before I even start playing the clarinet. Thank you all for attending, and if you're in the mood, stick around for the little uh, chat and question and answer afterward. And if you don't know how to do that, ask somebody who knows Zoom, and they'll explain it to you, because I cannot. Deborah Strauss for giving me this tea glass for a performance we did at the 92nd Street Y in the Manhattan years ago. What? <laughs> Anessa tells me the mic is off, but I think you can hear me anyway because there are other mics around here. Thank you to Deborah Strauss for this tea glass which she gave me as part of our performance at the 92nd Street Y many years ago. It has water in it today, but I think of you, Deborah, every time I drink from it.
to do it. <laughs> okay, we have to back up. <laughs> Otherwise, you can't see our heads as we can <laughs> see. There we go. And who's going to do this? Okay, so it may seem somehow counterintuitive or backward, but I can only hear people if I have these headphones on because we're not connected to a speaker here because if we were, it would be creating audio havoc. So excuse me for putting on this gear, but uh, now I don't know what happens, but we're here and and ready for whatever I think the, so this is Tom I'm the host everyone I think the easiest way is just allow people to unmute themselves and hopefully we'll see people can self-referee a little yeah. bit I mean the way I can moderate it but I think it's easier you know hopefully not everyone talks all at once but I will I wouldn't allow people to unmute themselves and hopefully we'll self-regulate regulate, regulate. Mm. All right, people can unmute themselves if they want to ask questions. Just try to be oh. conscious. Okay, I would like to thank you both. It was a wonderful, wonderful program. And as I'm seeing all these chats, obviously other people agree with me. And uh, thank you for doing this. And as you say, in these troubled times, but it's, it's, this was a real bomb. Great, Fran, it's nice to see you. It's nice to see you too. <laughs> Are there records or video available? Of this performance? Of any performance. <laughs> well, the two of us have our own CD. And um, well, Fran, maybe you can regulate how people <laughs> might get in touch with us or with you. Oh. Just, uh, yeah. I don't know. And that if you uh, want to just, if you just want to you know, put your information in there, in the chat, maybe that would be easiest. Uh oh. Downloaded the program, but we have actually a written program, which was, I think, posted by some means or other. So if you're logged into this session, you should have some means, if you haven't done so already, of getting that. And at the very bottom, there's a little line that says, for more information, contact Annetta and Kurt. And it's got an email address there. So if nothing else, do that, or go to the website suggested by that domain name, and you'll find things. Okay, thank you. Thank you. This was a wonderful, warm, and intimate performance, and I'm curious if either of you play other instruments. Netta cannot yet hear anything that's being said here, so excuse me if I have to translate or or it's interpreter, or whatever you would call it. A, a lady just asked whether either of us plays any other instruments. And indeed, we both play quite a few instruments. I guess I'm the, the primary one. Of that. We both play the recorder in all of its various sizes and manifestations. And I also play the saxophone and all of the many sizes of clarinet. You may have even seen the, the basset horn yeah. mentioned on the program, but none of the pieces we chose call for the basset horn, which is basically a tenor clarinet. Uh, but um, yes, we, we play other musical instruments. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And I'm sure you play them as beautifully as you did today. Mm, uh, the, the clarinet I play better than <laughs> the other ones. Um, However, you may have seen in the program some reference to me having performed and recorded with Itzhak Perlman. And in those programs, I mostly played the clarinet. But there's another instrument not represented here. In Yiddish, it's called a tzimbel. And this is actually a rather, you almost never see this instrument these days, but it was at one time the prototypically Jewish instrument of Eastern Europe alongside the fiddle. It was pretty much necessary. and 
Nobody builds these instruments today, so I built mm -hmm. my own based on some historical models. I won't go into all the details, but I do play the cymbal, but I am by no means an expert or a virtuoso at it. However, in those performances with Itzhak Perlman, in every performance there was one duo of him and me with me playing the cymbal. And people are often impressed or astonished that I played with Itzhak Perlman. And I have to say, it has to be the world's record for the person with the least competence on their instrument playing with another person with the most <laughs> competence the most com on their <laughs> instrument. I won't say which of, which of us that refers to, but I think you can get the inferred meaning of it. I wouldn't hazard a guess. Yeah, OK, <laughs> OK. But I will tell you, he liked it. And, and once before a concert, we found ourselves sitting close to each other, just sort of setting our instruments up, and I was tuning the instrument. And he, I think he made a point of coming over and sitting next to the cymbal and, and remarking on it. And uh, I didn't know whether he knew. I said, you know, I built this instrument. He says, yes, I know, and that's one of the best things about it. And I thought, OK, I'll take that. That's good enough. Yes. And, uh, okay. I have heard of the instrument before. Yeah, it's referred to in various songs. And it's re <laughs> both expressions, one of which is, er springt wie a moise auf ein Zimbel, which means he's jumping around <laughs> like a mouse <laughs> on a cymbal. Right. I think, Got they mean, I think the reference is to a cymbal while it's being played because it's struck with hand-held mallets. There was at least a partial success. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Keep on playing. As they say in the in the past, next year at the Highland Park it's Library, like you usually have your concerts. Oh, I'm glad. I don't the know thing, who's the speaking. thing about Jewish camp. Yeah. That uh, I wanted. I got this. I got to tell him that I went to camp with Mark Yeah. <clears throat> and he even got a question or two. Then I, not very respectfully, I suppose, excused myself and went on to the oh, yeah, concert. I'm not sure who, I can't see all of your images right now. We have a screen on which only a few of them appear. But I heard somebody speak up about the Highland Park Library. And I'm glad Was you I? did. Great. I'm glad you did. I want to ask you to do something. Next time you or any of the others there who are attending this from Highland Park, next time you're in your library, please thank the people there of all these libraries that participate in this program, and all of them do wonderfully, there's something extra special about those people at Highland Park. Twice, it's true, yeah, it's true. Twice when Chicago Klezmer Ensemble played there, they saw that they were going to vastly overpopulate their auditorium. So right. They did enormous work to move things around in their main hall, moving bookshelves and desks and things out of the way to create a big performance space. They treated us really nice. So if you see any of the people who are in charge there, tell them we remember and we, uh, we are still grateful <laughs> for their extra effort. I, I will tell them. I'm a volunteer okay. there and I oh, and we live in Pilot Park. So okay. I will tell them because they need to hear that. Thank okay. you. <laughs> That's an Ed Levin. Uh, does anybody happen to know whether Annette Faustfeller is attending here? Speaking of Highland Park. Okay, she's the great granddaughter of a klezmer, and her grand <laughs> her, her grandfather uh, is photographed in one of the famous pictures of klezmorum, a group called the Faust family Capella, and her father emigrated to the United States, so she survived the Holocaust. But the entire ensemble, the Faust family Capella, all perished. But she comes to every one of our concerts at the Highland Park Library, and she's become a friend over the years. But I haven't heard from her in a while. So if anyone sees Annette, originally Antonia, Antonia Faust Feller, please give her a greeting from me, too, please. Hausenfeller. Good. Are we about done, or is there somebody else with some questions? I have one question. Okay. I have one question. Uh, this is Abigail speaking. It was a really, really beautiful concert. Thank you Thank so you. much. It's the sound was also incredible, really incredible. Uh, oh. I, I'm, I'm okay, you, I mentioned you. earlier I'm our friend you. Michael Winograd, who, by the way, is a fantastic musician. He's, he doesn't just have ears; 
he's got fingers and, and lips as well, and he plays the clarinet and other instruments. And uh, I think we have a little mutual admiration society <coughs> between us. Um, so Thank he's the one that helped helped us ensure that we got a good sound for this thing. So, all right, great. Yeah, it was, it was truly that. good. Um, yeah. But my question, my question is, where does one find the Dem Rebens Niggin that you played? It was so lovely. Oh, well, feel free to write to us at that address that I mentioned, but I'll tell you, I, I, I toyed with the idea of making this part of the program, but it, it would be so easy to get into talking and showing things instead of just playing music. There is a transcription of it in volume 10 of Abraham Idelson's Thesaurus of Hebrew, Thesaurus of Hebrew, the source of Hebrew melodies, I might be leaving a, na a word or two out of that title, but volume 10, the, the volume Isn't that dedicated nice? to um, Hasidic that, music, uh, has a representation of that too. So, uh, and there's a collection of the tunes of the Chabad Hasidim, which is called Sefer Ha Nigunim. And it's the very first tune in that book. It's part of a group of tunes that are attributed to the original Rebbe who founded the Chabad Hasidic group. And it's interesting because if you would take the first page of each of these notated versions and put them side by side, even in front of a trained musician, they're not likely to think that they're the same tune at all. They are so completely different looking from each other, and yet each of them is built around the same skeleton of a, b a basic tune. And part of the project of learning a tune like that is not to learn every single note the way it's written on a page, but to somehow see through it the essential melody and to realize that each of the written versions is itself an elaboration of that basic skeleton. And that's what we've done with those two sources. Plus, th plus it appears in um, Moshe Bergovsky's transcriptions of Tishnegunim. He doesn't identify it as a Chabad melody, but it's one of those tunes that's been around for a long time, known by a lot of people, in some cases without knowing of any of the other manifestations of the tune. So I'm giving you a lot of information that doesn't help you get to the point where you can grab it and play it, but feel free to write to us and I'll, I'll try to offer some further advice or uh, consultation on it if you wish. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, I toyed with the idea of actually like photocopying just the first two or three lines and holding one of them up and saying, here's this, and, then, and holding another and saying, even if you don't know how to read music, you can at least get how notes go up and they go down, and some of them are busier and faster, and some of them are slower and longer. And you would look at these two and you would say they're two completely different things, and yet they are exactly the same melody. And um, that it's th examples like that are themselves an education about what makes Jewish music what it is or what it isn't. And um, it's an enjoyable process. I guess you can Kurt, tell that because I'm so excited just talking about it. Kurt, this is Jake Morowitz. Hi, Jake. Uh, hi. You and Annette are spectacular. I want you to know that it was our biggest Zoom event yet. Oh. And oh. I attribute it to your reputation and your talent. And you didn't disappoint anyone, I am absolutely certain. And I recall probably seven or eight months ago, we tried to figure out how to do a Zoom event. And neither you nor we were sophisticated enough to figure out how to do it. And we've stumbled around. You guys are supremely successful at it now. The music, the tones were beautiful. We have figured it out. I want to thank Tom Ledford, who hosted today, yes, thank and you, Franz Tom. Borkin. But uh, this was spectacular. And we should do it again. In the spring, maybe, we should do it again. Uh, it's, you know, words escape me about how I felt and how it uplifted me in these times. So I want to thank you and Annetta very, very much. And I want to thank all the 150 plus people that attended from Scotland, Colorado, Stockholm, and God knows where else. And if any of them have any extra money, contribute to Chicago Evil so we can do more. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I oh, man. Could I ask Steve a quick Michael question? Michael Alpert. Hello, Michael. My, my brother and friend and colleague, and uh, I, there aren't nouns for the other things. 
Hey, you guys. Hi. Wonder wonderful to hear you and see you and see this amazing network uh, of people and and uh, more than a network community world of people come together here. Thanks so much for doing this. And, and thanks to the Evo, who I have also been had the pleasure of being hosted by at points in the past to the Chicago Evo, specifically right, Jake wonderful. and others. Yeah. Hey, nice. I, I have a question. Could I could I ask? Can you hear me? Absolutely. Yes. Oh, good. I hear you. Uh, thank you. I was recommended to you to hear you by Matt Jaffe uh, in Fairfield, Iowa, oh. who I love. And he, Matt he Jaffe. Yes. And he plays yeah. the violin and he he said he doesn't feel like he's good enough, but I, I do. But anyway, um, <laughs> do you ever play with a violin as well? Because I love the Klezmer violin sound. Oh, of course. Um, we've made several references to Chicago Klezmer Ensemble, which is a larger group than what you see here. Uh -huh. But of course, circumstances prevent us getting together in large groups, especially with one of them blowing air all the time. Um, <laughs> But Chicago Klezmer Ensemble, in a normal performance, has at least two and sometimes three violinists. And it's oh, a wonderful wow. sound. Wow. It's one of the instruments I deeply wish I could play. Yeah. Um, so the answer is yes, but not here, not today. I see. Are, Are they you? accessible on YouTube or anything? Who? Uh, past performances? The ones who have the violin players. Oh. Yeah, there is a, yeah, you, yeah. if you look at, find our website, there are some representations. And of course, we have a CD, two CDs that are oh. purchasable. Oh. And, um, yeah. Klezmer violin, Klezmer. Not we're not the only ensemble in the world that has violins playing Klezmer music, but we certainly are one of them. Oh, good. If I can put in, if I can put in a word here, this, oh, sorry, go ahead. I just want to make sure I have the name right. Chicago Klezmer Ensemble? Oh, yeah. Okay. But, um, put your you guys put your uh your website in the in the in the chat um i just i want to say for those that don't know the chicago klezmer ensemble cd called uh, sweet home bukovina to me is one of the very the most beautiful gems to come out of this oh. entire phenomenon of the last uh 40 plus years of of klezmer music and the klezmer renaissance Thank you. Is that is that available on YouTube or anything? It's available through Kurt and Aneta's website, which is musiker.org, M-U-Z-I-K-E-R, M-U-Z-I-K-E-R, dot org. Okay. And it's, uh, what was it called again? The Chicago Klezmer Ensemble. Oh, you'll, it's called Sweet Home Bukovina, by the way, if I'm... I Sweet Home Bukovina? What's the third word? Bukovina? Bukovina, yes. Bukovina, you'll you'll recognize it. it. Okay. I'm just a listener without a picture, um, but I I put the link to the program in again um, in the text, so you should be able to see it. Wonderful, thank you. Annette is well, entering uh, the website information into the text as well, so you should all be able to find that if you want. So. This is Steve Weintraub saying hi. Hi, Steve. I wanted to dance so badly, and I was- We, we prefer so when you dance solid. well. <laughs> and, and since you're capable of dancing extremely well, we'd prefer that you dance well and not badly. Please. <laughs> um, but I've been doing online Zoom dances. Maybe I'll have you, and it kind of works when there's an ensemble that's together. Oh, we could do something, yes. This would be wonderful, yes. Yeah. And if I tell because of the lag, just dance to the music you're hearing. Don't worry about yeah. what other people are doing. Right. Well, yeah. we could we could play music which you listen to and dance to, and then in another location we could have another ensemble that's watching you and is playing music, following your lead. And we could, that would be an interesting experiment yeah, to conduct and yeah. see how that went. I just went. did a Zoom modern dance. Yeah. Remember, uh, I was reminded of uh, a poem. Of uh, these together. Um, Kurt and Aneta and others provided music for a modern dance piece I did in Chicago. And it was delicious to work with them. But we've Thank all you. gotten to dance and play together a lot. And I miss you so bad. <laughs> okay, enough. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, Steve, wasn't the second tune we played part of that program? I believe it was. Yes. I came in from shopping, so I may have missed the second Oh, tune. okay. All right. We'll fill you but in I, later. I caught most of the concert, and I'm very glad that I did. Okay. And I was pretty way gross reads even as we were playing, but um, I may have missed the first or second tune. Uh, well, you didn't but, because you heard us do it at your dance program, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I love your um I love your dragon that's behind you and also the artwork that's behind you. Do oh, you have any Thank you. Uh we had to turn the dragon off because it was because we have these these lighting things and the we were using the dragon for lighting but it so it would mm -hmm. set these things on fire. So oh. um yeah. <laughs> so thank Here's you. Here's a lamp. The dragon is a lamp. No, no, no. But you know what dragons do, don't you? you can't oh, yeah, right. Oh, dangerous, right. So, um, I see. I see. Yeah. Okay, the fire. Yeah. This one's very well behaved, as you can see. <laughs> Thank who's you. The, who's uh, the artist in that painting behind you? Ah, the artist is an Israeli woman named Irit Hadani. Mm, I like it. And, um, yeah, it's nice. It's very nice. Thank you. <laughs> I guess we're going to have to bring the dragon and that that painting to our live performances from now on. <laughs> Wonderful. Can you, do, is your uh, uh, do you do you have a, a video image on the? You're seeing you're seeing it from the camera eye view where we have everything arranged so that we can see it. But what we're looking at when we face what would be the audience. Uh, Oh, we may not be able to show it to you, but it doesn't look anything like what you see, and it certainly doesn't look anything like an audience, but we went to some trouble to get good lighting stuff set up, and um, never mind, it's not really all that important. And that they can't figure out how to get it for the camera. Oh, I see, oh. okay, okay, My, all right, never mind. Thank you all, this has been really fun. Thank you. It's really nice having the little chat afterwards. Yes. Did anybody feel like they missed out on something they wanted to ask about? Preferably something they think everyone else would want to know if they would think of that question too. I, I want to ask about something else. Is the Chicago Klezmer Ensemble recording that we've been uh, praising to the heavens here, uh, is it available for download anywhere? Um, CD Baby or uh, It might be. It iTunes? might be. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere. We didn't put it there because we're not the publishers of it, but I think that it possibly is. One would have to it, look and find out. It, as, as I put in the chat, it's on Spotify, but um, if people would buy the album too, that would be great. It's just, yeah, I just, you know, a lot of people want to download these days too. Yes. But yes. We'll okay. talk privately. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We just went on Oh yeah, I have begun putting some of my resources, some of my uh, historic, historical vintage recordings up on um, this thing called Bandcamp. Maybe we'll just put the entire, our, our CD repertoire up there as well. So and no uh, promises, but we'll get to it eventually. Steve Humble Corino is on Amazon. Oh. And he's doing, and Ian's on Amazon. Oh, well. At least. We don't like patronizing Amazon, but if you don't have no qualms about purchasing from Amazon, apparently an MP3 version of our CD is available by that means. Maybe we need to look into that, but okay, there we go. By the way, everyone, I did record, but I, I will, I'm going to talk with Kurt and Annette after the concert about the best way to dis possibly disseminate that, maybe on their website or... But I'll try to, if you're on the Chicago Evil email list, maybe I'll plan to try and include information about the recording once we figure that out. Cool. Well, we must do this more often. I just, if I might, if I might, this is Marty Morgenbesser from the uh, Städtel of Argon City. Hello, Hi. it's been way too long. I just wanted to share a memory that came to mind when you were talking about this music having come from weddings and also when Steve Weintraub, our friend, was talking about dance. 
The memory that came to mind was from 1996 in Juneau, Alaska, at the Alaska Folk Festival, when you were there and playing just beautifully. And uh, I, no, I don't think Annette was uh, was 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 with us yet, but. Uh, but um, uh, you were there, and I remember our friend Meshki, Michael Alpert, was leading a dance of some 900 people in Juneau, Alaska. And that sticks in my mind to this day. It's so good to see you and hear you. You're playing and sounding as sweetly as, as sweet as the maple syrup you used to carry with you whenever you, you traveled. Um, um, and uh, it's so it's so good to see you. <laughs> Thank you, Marty. It's yeah, wonderful to see you and hear you. Thanks much. Marty mentions that festival, and I often think of that too. My my clarinet teacher in my youth was also my middle school band director. I would go to sectional rehearsals of the clarinet section of the band, and I quickly discovered I was learning more from him in those rehearsals than I was learning from my private clarinet teacher. So I got my mother to arrange that I could take clarinet lessons from him, and I continued studying with him all through high school. He was a wonderful man who was not internationally known, and I always included him in my bios. When I would perform somewhere, it would mention Kurt studied with Lloyd Scott and uh, some other fellow whose name I can't remember, uh, Larry Combs. And at a couple of different points in my performing, somebody would say, who's this Lloyd Scott? Has anybody ever heard of him? And I'd say, well, he was my teacher. And they'd say, well, if he's not really famous, maybe you don't need to include him in the bio. And I would always say, no, he was my main teacher, so let's keep him in there. And it was after we performed at that festival in Alaska, a friend of Lloyd Scott's who got the local paper there saw his name in it and sent him the newspaper clipping about our performance in which he's mentioned as my teacher. And he was delighted and he sent me a nice message. And I just thought, okay, so the, uh, the karma ended up on the right side that time. It was a delight for all of everyone involved. So, so I remember that festival well too. I, I guess I'm lucky enough to count you as one of my early teachers uh, too, Kurt. This is Jay, by the way. Hello. And I just I just wanted to say thank you. Um, and uh, thank you both, Kurt and Annette. It was a, a beautiful concert, and I'm, I'm lucky enough I got a chance to hear it. Thank you. Likewise. Hi, Kurt and Annette. This is Sasha and Craig, all the way from Berlin. This was wonderful. We love oh, you. We miss oh, you so much. Oh, wonderful. We enjoyed the syrup. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very, very much. <laughs> I was just thinking about that. Yeah, and we told you how important it is. And now, and 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 uh, a completely objective third person, Martin Morgenbesser, confirmed about the legend of Kurt and his syrup. And uh, right. Yes. And uh -huh. I had no idea. And got right there, you know? Great yeah. minds. Thank you. I'll confirm the syrup too. I traveled, uh, <laughs> I was on the road with that syrup for 30 years <laughs> and counting more. <laughs> Yeah, we were first introduced to the, uh, the, the traveling syrup. It was in the Baranoff Hotel. I don't think it's called the Baranoff anymore, but I think you guys were staying there in Juneau. <laughs> Well, and Wisconsin, wins, wins, go ahead, go ahead, Kurt. Sorry, I don't remember that, but I remember the syrup. <laughs> the Wisconsin syrup, I should add. And as a as a partial New Englander, it's uh, it's not always you'll he'll, you're, you'll he'll hear me utter the words Wisconsin and syrup in the same uh, yeah. breath. But. And speaking right. of Alaska, I, I think our friend Joel Orloff was able to join us on this. He lives in Chicago now. Yes, yes, yes. So. And, I'm aware of that, and I'm delighted if he made it. Yes. A, a, a year ago, I was teaching uh, a niece of his here, and and through what? the family, I made some yeah some contact to him. But but because of this pandemic, we can't go visit yeah. the breakers and play for him there. But I would do it. I would happily do uh, it. And Joel, if you're on there, hello, and we I remember you well. And 
Yeah, I think he's living in Plainfield now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Near his son. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, another has 40 minutes. <laughs> another 45 minutes. <laughs> well, I can't, I can't say enough. What a delight this is. I feel like we have a little family operating here, and I'm enjoying it much. Thank you all. Are we about done? Oh, yeah. Oh, Not only a family, I want to point out that it, it looks as if uh, someone here, Nera Elieseva, is at work in in hospital, in healthcare, um, and watching this. Are you not? A little dinner for Bruce, little. And there's a little dinner for Bruce. Hello. Uh, Nera Elieseva, also known as Nikki Lipschultz. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it was on the weekend, then you could come mm. if it was on the weekend, but I don't know. Mm. The woman, Nikki, who just What's spoke up doing? a moment ago, is the woman whose wedding we played for a couple of years ago and for which we learned that absolutely wonderful Chabad nigga. Right. Um, I will remain. <laughs> well, nice uh, that you are right. here sure. too. Sunset. Yes, and I'm here, and Diego's here from home, and we love you What's guys, that? and it was just such a wonderful, wonderful thing to be able to share. It's like, it, always Great. it is with yeah. your music, but especially now, and that feeling like when you guys play, you, you play from your very cores, and feeling that, you know, it, it's What's so that? needed right now, you know, just feeling like you were sharing your Great souls thing. with us, and it was connecting to our souls, so thank you. Great. It's delightful to see you there and know mm -hmm. that you are here with us. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that was it. Thank you all for coming. And, you know, please consider supporting Chicago Yibo. Thank you all. Zeit gesund. Zeit gesund alle. And, yeah, great to see you all and thanks. <laughs>